by Mats Monson, CEO of Spago, who will now present his company. Welcome, Mats. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, my name is Mats Hansen. I'm the CEO of Spago Nanomedical, and I'm here today to present uh, Spago Nanomedical, who we are, uh, what we have, and the prospects we see for our projects. Uh, we believe we are experts in nanomedicine, and we aim to become a nanomedicine leader. We do have a proprietary platform of uh, nanomaterial, which have unique properties for uh, directing functionalized nanoparticles by means of physiological targeting to solid tumors. We are now in clinical stage, and I will come back to some exciting interim data that we uh, made public uh, uh, just the other day. Uh, and we have a unique portfolio of projects in diagnostics and in therapeutics based on our platform material. And given the, the interim clinical data that we see uh, right now and the previous preclinical data that we have demonstrated, we believe that we have a de-risk development uh, pathway ahead of us for both our projects, actually. We see a large unmet med medical need, both in diagnostics of solid tumors and, more importantly, in therapeutics uh, of the same. And, and we are targeting large indications, which provides for a large market, both in the, the diagnostic setting and in the therapeutic setting. I will come back to that a little bit more later. First, a few words of our platform. So what we have is a nanomaterial that is polymeric and that we can load with functional metal ions in order to uh, achieve diagnostic properties or therapeutic properties that we believe have a, could have a large impact on, on uh, cancer treatment. It's important to state that the uh, physiological targeting that we use by means of the so-called EPR effect in solid tumors allows for uh, a, a, a solution that is independent of drug release or molecular interaction with the cancer cells. So what are our nanoparticles? Well, we have a polymeric material that can be loaded with uh, clinically validated radioisotopes or metal ions for MRI diagnostics. We can use this material to target aggressive uh, tumors or tumors that are chemorefractory, uh, for instance, and also for diagnostic purposes of, of newly di diagnosed breast cancer patients, for instance. The good thing about using radio, radioisotopes for therapy is that they can be visualized by means of medical imaging, which means that we, in essence, can pre-select patients for clinical trials or for tr targeting uh, of the therapeutic effect. Uh, also, this gives an opportunity to de-risk the, the clinical development. And the milestones we have achieved with the diagnostic projects right now validates the, the platform material, both for, on the diagnostic side and the therapeutic side. So, in breast cancer, what is the role of MRI? Well, MRI is already used as a standard method in, uh, for imaging of breast tumors. There are lots of new cancer cases every year in this indication, uh, and a large fraction of them already undergo MRI today. So it's an established method. Uh, but the problem is that there is also a large proportion of false diagnosis, which puts restraint on the healthcare system, but also restrains the patients, of course. So there is a need for a tumor-selective contrast agent, which is specially developed for looking at solid tumors in the breast. And this is what we have. And, and with a specialized product, it's usually the case that you can, can take a premium price, which makes the addressable market very attractive in breast cancer only. Then, of course, we have the prospects of expanding the use of, of our diagnostic into other solid tumors as well. So, Spogopix is the name of our diagnostic project, which is a contrast agent 
that is tumor selective and that can be used with MRI to visualize uh, tumors in the breast, for instance. It is based on passive accumulation or as we call it physiological targeting to solid tumors. And this principle has now been clinically demonstrated by ourselves and by many others as well. Uh, the particles are manganese based, so, so in dif difference to, to all other agents on the market which are based on gadolinium, uh, an element that is not uh, uh, really wanted in the body. Uh, we have a good uh, IP platform uh, and we have chosen the breast cancer indication as our lead indication because we see that the, there is a large medical need and there is also good preclinical data showing that it works. And now we have these fantastic new results in breast cancer patients showing that it's actually working also in humans. So we have done that in a phase one trial that is currently ongoing here in Sweden. And we finalized the first dose group uh, earlier this year, showing that there were no safety concerns. And now we have completed the second dose group and shown that we actually get very good images uh, of the tumors. And it's important to say that this validates not only the SpagoPix project, but more importantly, our therapeutic project, TumorAd, which I'm going to come back to. So these, these are some initial data from the second dose group. We can clearly see there is a tumor in, in the breast. And we see at baseline that this tumor is kind of grayish. And when, when you look at the post-infusion images, you see that the tumor is lightened up by the contrast stadium. So this is considered to be a very, very good uh, contrast as enhancement of the tumor. Uh, and the study now, now continues uh, on, the, on the same dose in order to gather more data and to, to create more images. Uh, and we've also seen another important finding uh, in the study, and that is that we have a very good contrast enhancement in the pancreas. This was kind of unexpected, but it's so, something that we have investigated and, and are following up on as well. And we have understood that there is actually a large clinical need for MRI imaging of the pancreas as well, especially for follow-up of, of precancerous cysts or lesions. Uh, and obviously, th this is something that we consider as a strengthening finding for the licensing package that we aim to pull together in discussions with potential partners. So let me say a few words about our therapeutic project, Tumorad. As you probably all know, there, there is still a large need for new cancer therapeutics, especially in the late stage of, of many of the large cancer indications. And this slide is just to present the, the, the size of the potential market that we see in these very large indications that we have listed here. So Tumorad is based on the same prim principles as Spagopix. It's a nanoparticle, but we have used it to bind a therapeutic isotope, uh, lutetium, in order to be able to irradiate tumors from within side of the body. Uh, we have shown in the preclinical setting that this delays tumor growth and also extends survival in a very aggressive model of breast cancer. Uh, and with this data, we uh, selected candidate drug a few months ago, and we are now proceeding very quickly towards the clinic also with this project. Uh, so what we are doing is, of course, working with the scale up of the production. We are preparing for uh, the preclinical studies that are needed to support the clinical trial application. And we aim to start the first clinical trial in early 2022, as, as it stands now. So even more in interesting is the potential market in the therapeutic setting of a radionuclide therapy like, like Tumorad. We have calculated based on the annual mo mortality and uh, a, uh, an estimated price per treatments that we have based on the kind of pricing that we see for other comparable treatments on the market today. 
This gives a, a stunning addressable market on 145 billion euros per year. And if we break this down a bit more uh, based on uh, estimated market share and so on, we get to some annual sales potential of 1.5 and 4 billion euros per year. So a very, very large indication uh, potential of, of this therapy. So just to end up, we, we do have a unique nanomedicine portfolio. We believe that we have very promising data in the clinic as th things stand, and we believe that this is a major de-risking factor uh, considering where we are going with both the diagnostic project and our therapeutic project. So uh, thank you for listening. And thank you. And I have some questions for you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the competitive landscape within the space that you are working in. What does it look like? Well, on the, on the MRI contrast agent side, nothing much has happened actually for, for many years. And there are established players on the market and there are established agents on the market. Uh, what we do see is that those contrast agents have been reduced in numbers because of uh, withdrawals from the market uh, based on gadolinium toxicity, for instance, or worries about that. Mm -hmm. So we, we believe there is a very clear need and a very clear space for a product like Spogapix on the market. And there, it's also very clear to us who the potential license partners could be. For Tumorad, which is of course a radionuclide treatment, uh, we are starting to see a, a growing interest in this field. I think it's driven very much by the fact that there has been new products coming out over the last few years. Mm -hmm. We have Sofigo, we have Lutatera and so on. And we see that all, all basically, all the, the big pharma companies are now successively looking into this space and, and taking position. We know that Astra made a deal and not, not far from now and so on. So yeah, things are moving on. So in terms of geographical markets, which markets is it that you're aiming for initially? Well, I mean, we, we are looking to find a partner that has a worldwide uh, reach, mm -hmm. of course. And you are in discussions with partners, or can you tell us something about the... Well, for, well, I know obvi you probably don't want to. for obvious <laughs> reasons, I cannot. What I can, say, what I can say is that we, we have uh, contacts with each of the major companies in, in the uh, diagnostic fields that we, we are seeing. So, yeah. And if we look ahead to next year, what milestones can we expect from you? Well, first of all, for, for Spogapix, we are going to complete the clinical trial mm -hmm. that we're doing today. Uh, and obviously, based on those data, we are going to seek uh, a, a development partner or a marketing par partner. Uh, for Tumorad, we are expecting to finalize the preclinical package that will be required to, to seek uh, or to file a clinical trial application. And we are also going to conduct GMP production for the clinical trial. So. Altogether, we are aiming for filing of a clinical trial application, uh, well, somewhere around next end of next year or something like that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come here and tell us about Spago. Thank you very much. <laughs>